Hey everybody, today is Monday, June 27th, and I'm just doing a quick video to show you all um, kind of some tips for protecting your hair when you're swimming. So I've been taking swimming lessons lately, and I'm just going to do, um, I'm getting ready to go to the pool to practice um, and try and get my confidence up in the pool. So um, I just wanted to show you what I do with my hair. Um, one of my big tips would be to kind of synchronize your wash days with when you go to the pool because the chlorine can be pretty drying to your hair. So if you just washed your hair yesterday and then you wash it again today, that can kind of have some drying effects on your hair in addition to what you may incur from the chlorine. So I try to, um, I try and go to the pool Thursday and Monday and I just make sure that my, um, Hair washing days kind of coincide with that, so when I come back tonight, I will be on track to wash my hair. So, um, the first thing you want to do is to, sorry, I'm going to look at my notes, um, is to wet the hair. And this is a suggestion that I see a lot, um, kind of helps to, I'm not sure exactly what wetting your hair does, but it helps to kind of um, alleviate the chlorine sinking into your hair. So, um, I did have a spray bottle that I would probably use for this. Um, but left it on a trip this weekend, so I don't have it anymore. Um, so just using a good old sink, sink water is fine. Um, and my pool is about 20 minutes away, so of course it's still going to be somewhat um, damp when I get there, but not completely. So I'm not going to put too much water on it, I'm not going to soak it wet, um, because I hate drippy hair from driving and things like that, and just walking around. So, I'm wetting the hair. And I really think wetting the hair really helps more so with the next step. So after you finish um, wetting your hair, make sure I wet it. After you finish wetting your hair, you want to coat it with some type of conditioning product. So, and by conditioning product, I mean like a leave-in or a regular conditioner. And so, sometimes um, I use the Cantu Shea Butter because you want to apply it liber not liberally, um, generously. So, this is a cheapy conditioner that I don't mind just like lathering in my hair. Um, so, I've used this before, but also, since I'm getting ready to wash my hair, I kind of want something that's going to serve as like a pre-poo. And so... Um, I've been using the organic yucca and something anti-breakage mask from Shea Moisture. So this is a deep treatment. Um, you can be used as a deep conditioner, but it's for um, thin to fine hair, so it's a pretty um, thin product in comparison to their other ones. So I like to use this as a pre-poo for hands, and it really helps my hair to feel so much softer once I come back from the pool. So I apply. Maybe about this much. And this smells really good. I love how this smells. And like I said, you want to apply a lot. So the conditioner can prevent the hair drying. Um, and the color effects that come from chlorine. So a lot of times you'll see that um, some people get green hair with chlorine. And I'm not sure if that happens a lot with African American hair. Um, but you never can be sure because a chlorine is a chemical. So you want to do the most you can to protect it. And since it already um, is known for drying your hair out, by adding the conditioner for the moisturizing effects, it will help to alleviate that. And it adds kind of like a layer or foundation of protection because your hair is already coated. So it's different than just going in with, you know, straight dry hair that has no product on it. So you want to apply this to the whole head. And I've probably applied a little bit more just to make sure that it's coated, um, especially in the middle. Um, the middle is the area that I always miss. But the most I probably I would hit the spots that you know you're gonna get um, wet. Hit those a little bit more. Like the nape of the neck is always an area that gets um, gets wet the fastest because that's the low lower part of your head and that's where people kind of if they get in the water. That's probably the, the part that hits the water the most, as opposed to the top, because everybody doesn't just get, you know, full in. All right, so it's in there. Um, I'm not detangling or anything like that. Um, so, yeah, the next thing that I do is just to pull it up, because 
I mean, I've never, I've never read that this is what you're supposed to do. But for me, I just know that my, I just prefer it to be up off of my neck and not just like I'm, you know, if I'm going in the water, I don't want my hair just to be fully immersed, immersed in the water, um, loosely. So I have my, um, old, uh, knee high. So I always pull my hair back with this and I did have, um, you can use the goodie elastic. It doesn't matter. Um, the water is not going to like destroy it or anything like that. So just going to pull it up. Probably, I would put it up as high as it can go. I mean, it doesn't have to look necessarily cute, but just, uh, I wouldn't put it up too loose, but I just like kind of a high puff. I'm only on like my second lesson, so I don't just get completely in the water. So this is pretty high for me. <laughs> this is good enough. My first time I came home from my lessons, my dad was like, you didn't swim. Your hair is not wet. And he was right. My hair wasn't wet, and that's fine. But I'm getting better now, so I need to pull it up. Um, the next thing, rinse your hair out at the pool. Um, if you're like me, where it takes me like 20 minutes to get home from the pool, and then most times I don't just hop right into um, washing my hair. The longer the chlorine sets in the um, without you rinsing it out, I think the easier it is for it to do some type of damage to your hair. And I'm, you know, everything. Everyone's still on the fence about what effects the chlorine has on your hair, um, but you, I'd rather be safe than sorry. So you can rinse it out of the pool. There's always showers there, um, but I would suggest definitely rinsing it out of the pool. Sorry. So rinse it out of the pool. And then, let's see, so what, that way when you get home, you're ready to kind of get straight into the shower and not have to um, worry about the chlorine still being in your hair. In your hair. Um, so once you get home, that would, that would be when you could start um, your normal hair routine. The only thing I would say, if you're a co-washer, I would not suggest co-washing for after the pool. I would suggest that being the time that you use some type of shampoo. Um, they have specific swim shampoos. But I would still just recommend um, mo most likely a shampoo that has a sulfate because I do believe that's, that's one of the things that they're designed to do. Um, but that's, that's your call. If you think that co-washing and just using the conditioner is going to help to um, take out the chlorine, then that's fine. But conditioners aren't, you know, they're not designed to remove the product load or to move, remove the chemicals like the chlorine. So a lot of people will suggest using a clarifying shampoo, which most likely will have a sulfate in it. So I will most likely be using, let me see if I have it, oh, the Herbal Essences Totally Twisted Curls and Wave Shampoo. Um, and this shampoo is it's not a bad shampoo, it's just a little bit too strong for my hair to use on a regular basis. So you can, I've had this for a whole year, I don't even know how much, why that much is gone because I don't use it that much. Um, but this will be what I'm using and then I'll just follow that with um, my conditioner, I use the Shea Moisture sort of conditioner and then an oil rinse and then a leave-in conditioner. So that will be how I finish my hair and how I protect it with um, swimming. So if you have any questions, just leave them. If you have any tips, feel free to share those. Um, and that's it. Bye.